You're listening to Front Row with me, Kirsty Lang, live from Edinburgh. And now to Brian May, who I think it's fair to say is a bit of a polymath. Um, What's that, then? Yeah, well, I'll, now I'll explain. Well, because apart from being the lead guitarist of Queen, uh, you've got a PhD in astrophysics. You are a badger rights activist. Yeah, um, and you indeed. are one of the world's foremost collectors of 3D uh, photography, That's which right. we're going to talk about in a minute. I've indeed. got some of Brian's special glasses, what he gave me. Um, uh, now, uh, uh, not many people know this, but Brian has a publishing company devoted to books with stereoscopic images and for those of you who are not familiar with this technique it's about creating the illusion of depth that's sort of 3d you're going to explain more in a moment but Very well uh, <laughs> and so with each book you get a special pair of these uh, glasses in the back that, that brian's developed and his latest publication is with professor uh, roger taylor who's a a, 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 his, a photography historian um and, and no not the drummer from queen nope. <laughs> nope. um and this book is um, uh, it, it's, uh, an illustrated biography of this um, really interesting minor man and a pioneering Victorian photographer called George uh, Washington Wilson. And Brian and Roger have just hot-footed it over here from the Edinburgh Book Festival. But Brian, th this is a little bit of an obscure hobby, isn't it? I mean, how did you get into stereoscopic photography? Yeah, it seems obscure at first sight. Well, I got into it at the age of about 11 opening my Weetabix packet and finding a little card in it with two images on it. It looked like two little flat, ordinary pictures, but it said, send away one and sixpence and a packet top and we will send you your stereo viewer. So obviously I did that. You put the card in the viewer and hey presto, suddenly instead of two little flat pictures, you get a vista which looks completely real and in depth and stereoscopic. So I was hooked and I have been for the whole of my life and it entranced was by this magic of 3D. And it was very popular in, in, in the mid-19th century, wasn't it? Well, it was invented in uh, the mid-19th century, about 1850. Um, a lot of it happened after it was discovered by, um, by Wheatstone. It's amazing that this never happened in, in the Renaissance. Nobody actually twigged the fact that we've got two eyes and uh, our brains perform this miracle of stereopsis, which gives us our depth perception, and obviously was a huge advantage in our evolution. You can imagine, you imagine, you know, you know how far away your predator is and how big it is. It, you know, it's obviously a great thing, but the magic was discovered in the 1850s. By the end of the 1850s, there was a massive craze of people buying stereoscopic pictures, which is the 3D. It was, it, it was actually only called 3D in the 1950s when there was a resurgence of this oh. stuff. So 3D has had a strange history. Now, Roger, tell us about the subject of your book, um, George Washington Wilson, a Scotsman, a fascinating character. Well, Wilson um, belongs to that first generation of art photographers, he trained as an artist and took up with photography. Photography only kind of came to the fore in the 1840s. So Wilson is the next generation along who comes to use it to talk about the nature of Scotland and Scottish landscape. And he exports these all over Britain and is part of that whole tourist phenomena in the 1850s and 1860s. But, but I mean, but spooling back a bit, I mean, he was the son of a crofter, became a painter, painting but, sort of miniatures. Indeed. And then he takes <coughs> up uh, uh, photography and um, uh, advertises his services taking views and landscapes of gentlemen's seats. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it, you've got to remember that there, there was no such thing as a profession as being a photographer. You had to create your own market. You had to create your own identity within that market. And Wilson was very good at doing that. And he, and he became the, uh, Queen Victoria's official photographer at Balmoral. He did indeed, from a very early date. Um, 1853, when they started the new Balmoral, he was uh, commissioned to make the construction photographs. And then he started taking portraits of the royal family and so on and so forth. He took that famous or infamous photograph of Queen Victoria with John Brown. She's sitting on a pony and there's John Brown. What's not known is in fact that behind the horse, cropped off, is another keeper which was on the original photograph. So this photograph has this other kind of life. So in a way he was a sort of celebrity photographer, one of the first, in, in that sense, I mean, yeah. royal photographer. Um, what interested me about your book, though, was the social history, the context in which Wilson was working at a time when mass tourism begins, and his images and postcards of Scottish landscapes were particularly popular with visitors lured by Sir Walter Scott's novels. Indeed. I mean, you've got to remember, in the mid-Victorian period, the people who were buying these stereo views, they come on a little card about sort of so big, they're three by five. These were expensive. They were two shillings each. Who could afford them? This is the educated upper and middle classes. These were people 
deeply immersed in Walter Scott and all things Scottish. These were the people who came to Scotland armed with a black's guide to the Highlands, the Trossachs, and they went round and they stood in the places where they were told to go and view these wonderful scenes. And in their heads, they carried all the poetry. At home, they put the view, the stereo view, in the viewer, and they were able to be transported back to that spot, that moment. Oh, anyway, Brian, <coughs> photography on the radio is not easy. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> Especially stereo photography. Yes, very, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I, portray, so you're going to have to sort of describe some of this. So, I mean, this is the book, and, and, and Brian has published it, but he's also written a foreword, and it's, it's, it's full of the story um, of, of George Washington, um, yeah. but also lots of these, these photographs, and you, so you can you look at them with this little thing. Mm. I have to say, I struggled a bit. I mean, I, did, I had to do a lot of... It takes a moment before you get the knack of it, but then it kind of comes naturally, yes. It takes, it's worth spending a moment just learning how to do it. You have to relax, basically, because most people tend to put the, the stereoscope, you know, the viewer that you have in your hand, they put it in front of their eyes, and then they kind of peer into it as if you're looking at an ant on the page. But actually, you're not supposed to do that. You should just look through the viewer as if you're looking through um, a pair of binoculars, into the, you know, look dreamily into the distance, and it will happen. The magic will happen. So what are your favourite images, some of your favourite images in this book? Can you I love the one on the cover, beautiful shot, and, and Wilson evolved this technique of taking pictures into the sun. So which let me describe that, it's three, three men in a boat on a lake, on a lock. Three people in a boat, yes, I, I can't don't know see what their the gender is. We don't like to talk about these no, days, do yeah, we? No. Um, <laughs> but he, he was a master at managing to get images of a, a landscape with the clouds. So that was unknown in those days, because it was very hard to get a, a picture of a landscape which didn't have the, the sky bleached out. So that's one of my favorite images. Another one is um, of Ellen's Isle, which is taken through the foliage of an oak tree. And he's framed it so perfectly. It looks very nice just as a mono image on the page. But in stereo, it's like you're in that tree and you're surrounded by these leaves and everything. It happens to be an oak tree of which the, the boat is made. So not the boat, the, the, the island. Now I'm talking about a completely different picture. Um, <laughs> There's no editing on this programme, is there? No, no, anyway. no, it's live just as <laughs> it goes. An like, what you, there's another yeah. one where you're looking at a, a, a warship, which is yeah, actually yeah. made of the oak, but um, I love those things. I mean, uh, uh, Roger, when we think of Victorian photography, we often think of sort of formal, stiff portraits taken with long exposure. Um, but some of these uh, photographs are real street photography. It's you know, Princess Street in Edinburgh, full of carriages and people wandering around. Yeah, Wilson was one of the first people to actually conquer that whole problem of making short exposures. He modified his chemistry, modified his equipment, um, and he had a very deft way of making exposures, briefly. He took his Glengarry bonnet in his left hand and he would then go flip, flop, and that was how he made his brief exposure. Hung this over the lenses and then flip it on and off and make the exposure. And, and, and Brian, just finally, uh, you're not only a collector, you've used this stereoscopic technique yourself, haven't you, taking photographs Absolutely, of Absolutely, I took Holt. a stereoscopic picture of you, didn't I, just now? You, you did. were thrilled, weren't you? I was you? really <laughs> excited, actually. <laughs> she went, ooh. Ooh, yeah. Well, it's not, yeah, you can not, do it so easily with your yeah. iPhone. You, not, you don't need any kind Brian of... Brian May takes a picture of you, is it, let's face it? <laughs> <laughs> any time. A stereoscopic one. Yeah, That's it's special. very much with us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All you need is an iPhone. You go click and then go a little bit over to one side and do another click. And there's a little app which will help you put them side by side and you then put them in your owl. <laughs> Brian May and Professor Roger Easy. Taylor and all of my guests, thank you very much. And the book, George Washington Wilson, Artist and Photographer, is available now in a 3D viewer.